Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm playing in a vehicle which I really rather wouldn't, and that is the Black Prince. This is the Tier 7 British heavy tank. And a lot of you might be thinking, well, what is this absolute British Muppet talking about? Why wouldn't he want to play a British heavy tank? Well, that's because the Black Prince is just so darn slow. This vehicle is limited to 20 kilometers an hour, and its armor, when they made the vehicle HD, really kind of fell out of favor. The vehicle, after the HD model was applied to the Black Prince, really just couldn't deal with equal and higher tiered opponents. I mean, it couldn't really before, but Wargaming really absolutely demolished the vehicle. One of the most annoying things about the Black Prince is the fact that the hull actually extends underneath, well, through the center of the tracks. So this actually counts as hull armor, all of this bar that you see along the center here. And you can actually see the outline as you go through bushes, which is a bit weird. So that means that if you're below the Black Prince and you shoot right up into the tracks, not only are you going to take the tracks off, but you're also going to damage the vehicle, locking it in place effectively eternally. And when this vehicle gets locked down in a place like that, yeah, it's not really where you want to be. So the Black Prince has definitely been power creeped as well with regards to the matchmaking in World of Tanks. Now that there aren't so many Tier 5 and Tier 6 tanks or even that many Tier 7s around and you don't get into matchups like this very often, then it just doesn't perform very well against 8s, 9s and 10s. And this is really one of the tanks that time has left behind. But thats I don't want to really focus completely on the Black Prince today. I, I talked about this tank I think last four years ago on this channel. What I want to focus on today are slow tanks and how I make them bearable to play in World of Tanks. Alright, so firstly, when you're playing your slower vehicles, limited to 20 kilometers an hour like this, or the T95, or even the TOG, or even your super heavies and super heavy tank destroyers, the first thing is, is to accept your weakness of being slow, and to make sure that you don't ever think, oh, I can go and keep up with that medium tank, or oh, I can outflank that light tank. You have to realize where your weakness is going to make you vulnerable. And so that is often when you're advancing into position that if you get spotted, that you're going to be get caught out by tank destroyers, you're going to get caught out by artillery. For example, how I would play this map for this tank is completely different how I'd play it for a medium tank. For a medium tank, I've got mobility. I can react to the situation. The position that I go into won't be my final destination. So I would make my way towards the center of the map, see if I get spotted with six cents, or maybe if I spot any of the vehicles that are opposite me. And if there are, then I might want to play cautiously. Or alternatively, if there aren't, I might want to push the advantage. And if I really get some pressure from the enemy team, then I can fall back. In a heavy tank, if you tried to do that, you would literally get caught out in the open and pretty much blown up by all of the enemy artillery and tank destroyers. And so, with a vehicle like this, those first 30 seconds are incredibly important to try and formulate a plan of how to influence the battle or how to attack the enemy team. Heavy tanks, and or should I say incredibly slow vehicles such as the Black Prince, have to know where the enemies are going before they know they're going to get there. That sounds like a bit of a weird thing to say, but it, it's super important. If the enemy can get there at 40 kilometers an hour, and you can you, you can only get there at 20 kilometers an hour, obviously it's going to take you twice as long to get there as it's going to take the enemy player. And so you have to be predicting where the flow of the battle is going to go before it is actually occurring. And it, in your super heavy tanks, that's actually far more of an important thing to do than in your medium tanks or your light tanks. Those vehicles can be reactive. These vehicles, they have to be preemptive. And so by pushing to this flank, I thought, oh, maybe I'm going to fight the King Tiger. Maybe I'll fight some of the heavy tanks on the enemy team. And also, importantly, I have to try and get into a position where I'm not going to get caught out in the open against artillery. And I thought that this location would be absolutely fantastic for that. However, nobody went there. I just cleaned up the Cromwell as quick as I could, saw that the Challenger has whipped his way all the way across the to the north of the map faster than I could possibly ever do that. And so I realized, okay, What's happening in this battle right now? Well, we have an Achilles in the center. I feel like we're quite strong. We have this kind of position of strength all along here. And what I quite like to do is imagine the battle line drawn up in between my forces and the enemy forces. You've also got to think, what's the likelihood of the heavy tank maybe getting to this corner and then locking in there? Before, I was thinking that the vehicle was quite strong in the center. Now that that vehicle has died, I'm realizing, well, we might be losing the center. But hopefully I can manage to help the C-25 against the Achilles. We're unable to do that because we're just so darn slow, but the artillery is going to be able to finish him off. Anyway, it's beside the point. What I'm trying to focus on is that I decided that because the north was lost, that evidently the enemy were going to try and flank into my base. And it just takes me so darn long to get there that you might as well do something to entertain you while you are getting there. Like, 
reach to the sky and elevate your gun up there and at least make yourself look pretty, right? Yeah? Well, maybe. I don't know. It's literally what I'm doing when I'm playing this vehicle is twiddling my thumbs. Because you literally have minutes sometimes between your maneuvers on a map like this before you actually are going to get stuck into the action. But it's really important that you do see where you're going to need to be. And this is this is the perfect example. I literally left the, the J1 area probably about a minute, a, half, a minute and a half ago or even two minutes ago. Probably two minutes actually thinking about it. And if I hadn't, then I wouldn't be able to get back into base to be able to stop this King Tiger and the VK3001P from capping. This game has looks absolutely horrific. What have we done? Oh, well done, Quacky Baby. You have achieved 243 damage. You've done absolutely no spotting. I've had hardly an impact in this game, right? But that is what will happen in your super heavy tanks. How was I to know that nobody would manage to go to that flank? How was I to know that the enemies would all go up north in their heavy vehicles? So it doesn't matter in the end because once you get there it's up to you to perform and that's hopefully what we're going to do here. So I focus one on the P43 behind. I see the VK in front. Obviously I need to shut him down as quickly as I can. Now I can turn my attention to the King Tiger. And while the standard rounds on this vehicle have 171mm of pen, the premium rounds have 239 Now that's going to be enough to be able to go through this King Tiger, the opposite tier 7 tank even though he has a tier 8 hull. He amoraks me with the first shot, probably right through the lower plate or even he might have gone through the tracks there on the side. But my rate of fire is going to give me the advantage. And while we're both firing gold at each other which means we're always going to penetrate, there you go. Cap circle secured. And because I managed to deal with that threat so darn quickly, we're actually going to catch the medium tanks out now behind us. The T-34-85 and the P-43 Tur are hopefully going to be right in front of my vehicle. We bounce one, we turn our tracks in to be able to angle our hull. Well, hopefully we're going to be able to bounce a shot. But it looks like he shot our tracks and also damaged our hull because of the awful armor layout of the Black Prince with the hull armor right underneath the tracks so people can just lock you in place. It's awful. I'm going to get up in the face, stop the P-43 Tur from locking me down. And then now, once again... We've got an incredibly tricky situation on our hands. All right, so we predicted what was going to happen in this battle about two and a half minutes, maybe three minutes before we needed to get there. We started going there and that was instrumental. We managed to pick up five kills. We managed to get rid of some top tier vehicles and we've turned our terrible game now into a slightly better game. But I still want more. I mean, come on, we're in a, in a one versus two situation here. I'm not sure how many of those vehicles we were actually... Are we, go, are we going for a Colobanovs now? I don't think I'm going for a Colobanovs here. I think we were probably in a, in a 1 versus 3 or 1 versus 4 situation there. Anyway, let's focus up um, on what we have to do. And that is, how am I going to win in a super slow heavy tank here? Alright, well, if I basically just leave right now and I try and make my way towards the enemy cap circle... What's going to happen? All right, there's there's seven minutes left on this game. It will probably take me about two or three minutes to be able to advance along this way or to advance along that way. I'm going to have to take the straight line, right? There's no way that I'm going to go all the way towards the southwest corner and then advance in. That's going to take me far too long. And God forbid that I'm going to climb the mountain over here to make my way towards the enemy base. So what I'm trying to highlight is that it's not it's not possible. If you're in a situation where you're outnumbered, then you can't go towards the enemy base to cap. You've only got one option, and that is to actually defend yours. Now, if I was in a faster tank, I would hunt. If I was a top-tier vehicle, if I was a Leo, or if I was a Comet, I would go on the hunt right now. But it's not going to win me the game. If I drive out, to all intents and purposes, the Challenger and the Leo could be in opposite locations, and then I'll never be able to catch them. What I have to do is I have to get them both in the same place at the same time. So I came up with a plan. My plan was to wait here, hope that the Leo or the Challenger would make their way through this corner here and be aggressive against me. But what I really want to happen is I want one of them to go into the cap circle. And if one of them goes into the cap circle, I'm not actually going to jump immediately to go and defend it. I got time. I don't have to move that much. I want the other person to join them in the cap circle as well. Because if I can get them both right in front of me with no opportunity for them to run away, or alternatively, even if they do run away towards the the uh, the south location on this map over here, eh, there's quite a good chance that I'll be able to make it around this corner and still catch a glimpse into the, their rear armor to be able to punish them as they try to run away here. But when you're in your heavy tanks, you need to be thinking about laying traps. You need to be thinking about st preventing the enemy's advantages from coming into effect in the game. And that will be their mobility. 
the Challenger starts running rings around me, if the Leo starts running away from me and using his camera rating and his, his view range, then it's going to, to not work. And my team was probably thinking right now, oh, this guy's a big noob, right? Because I was just sitting there waiting for two tanks to be inside the cap circle. Now I see that two tanks are in the cap circle, it's time to play. We put one into the Leo, we bounce his 300 alpha damage shot. I'm gonna put one into the Challenger to also interrupt him because the guy's gone behind the King Tiger. Now I'm gonna put one into the side of the Leo knowing that I've got a better reload than he will. And then wham, bam, thank you man. We're gonna put one into the top of the Challenger as well. And that is a feels good moment. Laying a trap. Do you think that the Challenger do you think that the Leo on the enemy team had even an inkling that the Black Prince was waiting <laughs> in ambush in the bushes up here? No. What these two thought is, hey, we've got a free win. The Black Prince probably made his way through this tunnel. The Black Prince probably is slowly trundling his way up the slope, maybe to like merrily swim his way or row his way in a, in a vehicle that is this slow towards the enemy base. No, no, that's not going to happen. We caught, we got them right where we wanted them, and we try to to create a ploy that even though we might be one of the slowest tanks in the game, if we just play it a little bit smarter, and you specifically know where the battle is going to be, and you have to start driving there before the enemy team even think that they need to go there, then you can be successful in your, in your really slow vehicles in the game. So we don't quite get enough experience at 1167 base to be able to get an ace tank at this battle, but we do get a very rare medal, the Delanglades medal. This is for vanquishing four enemy vehicles that are trying to cap your base. So I haven't only got this thing a handful of times, and of course it'd be the Black Prince that we get one of them. And of course, it goes hands in hand that you have a Delanglades medal if you also get a defender for our 80 two base defense points this round and a top gun for those seven kills and we did fire a lot of gold so we actually lost credits this game and i don't think there's really anything more we could have done in this battle that's it we hit every single shot we fired 18 hits 18 shots for 18 penetrations uh, we we drove 2.4 kilometers in the 10 minutes the battle existed because obviously we're limited to 20 kilometers an hour it, really the way that you can get through these tanks is to lower your expectations predict you have to predict where the battle is going to be so you can get there before you need to be there or shall i say when you need to be there but before the enemy team sometimes even know they're going there hopefully you guys and girls are getting what i'm saying and if you do that then more often than not or at least just just sometimes out of 10 then even your most painful slow vehicles are still going to be able to have a great impact in the battle Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully you found these tips and tricks for, for playing heavy vehicles or even just your slower vehicles in the game useful. If they were, give the video a thumbs up. But if you absolutely hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase. And this week, out of the 545 of you who have voted on Twitter and on Facebook, the winner is the Tier 10 French Autoloader is the Bat Chantillon 25T. So come along right now as I play through to practically, well, possibly the best assassin and the most flexible assassin in World of Tanks. I, I love this vehicle. And I'm going to be making my way through all of the, the French auto-loading medium tanks there so you can see how the whole of the line plays out whether it's a line that's worth grinding or alternatively if you already have the vehicles maybe you can pick up a few tips and tricks along the way and so really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and as always thank you so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you soon